do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy Scobar Drupal. <laughs> So we back with another big body banger. You feel me? Listen, listen, listen. Today we got another reaction. Know what I'm saying we rocking with the reactions. You rocking with the reactions. I have fun making these reactions. I like watching these type of videos, and it's cool that I can make a video watching these videos for y'all to watch my video and video. You feel me? But today we're gonna be rising to the craziest coincidences. That will apparently blow your mind. Now, me personally, you feel me? I know coincidences, right? This is a big coincidence that's happened literally right now as we speak. You know how big of a coincidence it is that out of all the billions of things you could have been doing right now, you're sitting right here Get up. watching this video. Get up. You probably, you probably could have been stripping right now. Get up. You could have been taking a poop. You feel me? You could have been taking crack. Now say you could have been doing literally anything, but instead you are here with me. Get up. And I appreciate that. I love you. No homo, no weird stuff, but I love you. I appreciate you. If nobody has told you that, if nobody has told you that today, this week, this year, I appreciate you, and you deserve the best in life. Know what I'm saying? I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I'm only saying that to sauce you up because you should go to jewrag.com and buy swing at the thermal for free. Come on, let's say some $50. Nah, you know I'm saying you can get the best Jew rags in the world. You can feel good about yourself without nobody telling you that you should feel good about yourself. You know what I'm saying? But for real though, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Y'all the great. Y'all the, the ghosts, man. For real. Y'all the ghosts. But we finna react to this real quick. Let's just get right into this. I ain't gonna waste too much time. I got ICs. <laughs> I got ICs. Number 10. Death by men. Have you ever Okay, what what is we starting off this with? I thought it was like coincidence is like a story. Like two famous people was at the strip club together or something like that. They're talking about death by a freaking mint. What type of video is this? Let's talk about that. That teacher that takes leading by example a little too seriously. Of course you know that they mean well and after all they're probably just doing it to be remembered. Well, South African astronomer Denis Dutois was rather unintentionally one of those teachers. After giving a lecture about death and how it can happen at any time in any place, he sat down and decided to have a tasty minty treat. He then quickly choked and died on a breath mint at his desk. Well, at least that's one lesson that will stick with his students for the rest of their lives. Wait. Wait, 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 run it back. Down and decided to have a tasty minty treat. He then quickly choked and died on a breath mint at his desk. Well, that's not a coincidence. That's like, that's a, what, y'all remember that show, Dumb Ways to Die. So many dumb ways to die. Choked on a mint and nobody in the class helped him. Nobody did the whole resuscitation pressing on his chest thingy. Nobody cared enough? Well, at least that's one lesson that will stick with the students for the rest of their lives. Number 9. The Girl from Petrovka After being cast as the lead in the movie adaptation of George Pfeiffer's book, The Girl from Petrovka in 1973, actor Anthony Hopkins felt the need to read the book to better portray his character. Unfortunately for Hopkins, he somehow found himself unable to find a copy anywhere in London despite looking through most of London's bookshops. At the end of the day, he abandoned his search and began to head home, when he found a copy of the book sitting on a bench all by itself. Oddly, the book was full of scribbles and penned in sentences, but Hopkins just assumed them to be the work of someone studying the book. So he took the copy and read it. Two years later, while the movie adaptation was being filmed, Hopkins and Pfeiffer were having a conversation about the movie, during which the author admitted that he didn't actually own a copy of his own book, as he had lent his annotated copy to a friend two years earlier. Hopkins then took out the copy he found on the bench, and asked if that was the one that Pfeiffer's friend had misplaced. Surprisingly, and I mean, come on, we wouldn't be putting it in the list if it wasn't, it was, and those scribbles and pen marks found in the margins were written by none other than Pfeiffer himself. What? So, moral of the story, next time you lose something, go to London and make sure it's not on a bench somewhere, or in a famous actor's possession. Wait, I don't understand what just happened. I was, the, <clears throat> the names was crazy, Pfeiffer, Peter Piper, whatever the heck the, heck the names was. What? I guess they was shooting a, a movie, and there was a book about the movie, and the movie that the book was about, the book was the person, and the person scribbled in it, and then they found a book, and, and that's the end of the movie. What? I don't get it. 
But that was a crazy coincidence if you ask me. Number eight, Hitler, Napoleon, and the Soviets. These are actually two separate coincidences, but for the sake of the video, we've grouped them together since they both took place during World War II. Firstly, Hitler and Napoleon's lives were very, very similar, despite the fact that they were born and lived 129 years apart. Everything they did in their lives was separated by this same number. Hitler gained power in Germany exactly 129 years after Napoleon came into power in France. He declared war on Russia exactly 129 years after Napoleon did, and he was defeated exactly 129 years after Napoleon was. The Soviets also had a crazy coincidence of their own during this time. A group of archaeologists from the Soviet Union opened the tomb of one of Genghis Khan's descendants, Tamerlane, on June 20th, 1941. Like his ancestor, Tamerlane attempted to conquer Asia. The Soviets found an inscription inside the tomb that read, Whomsoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. Two days later, on June 22nd, 1941, Hitler and the Nazis executed Operation Barbarossa and invaded the Soviet Union. What? I'm not understanding this, this, this. I feel like I'm in history class. This is this is hurting my brain. I gotta think too hard. I don't like this stuff. I like watching like the stuff with the animals and and the little boy that that married the 60 year old woman. I don't know what the heck going on here. This ain't coincidence. This is putting me to sleep. I'm tired of this crap. Number seven, Hoover Dam project. Hoover. In the early 20th century. J Hoover. Hoover. This about me. Nevada and Arizona took on a massive and dangerous project, building the Hoover Dam. There were three main reasons for building the dam. To help control the wild Colorado River, to provide water, and to provide hydroelectric energy to the southwest. During the construction of the dam, 112 people lost their lives. This death count is not really surprising when one considers that the workers would work as high as 800 feet in the air and were constantly going to tunnels that were filled with carbon monoxide, a toxic gas. Construction of the dam started after Arthur Powell Davis, the director of the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, proposed the project to Congress in 1922. The first death on December 20th, 1922 was that of J.G. Tierney, not the most positive way to start off a 13-year-long project. But the bill nevertheless continued as planned. Unfortunately, the project ended on a somber tone as well. Exactly 13 years later, on December 20th, 1935, Patrick Tierney was the 112th man to die constructing the dam. Coincidentally, he was J.G. Tierney's son. How poetic. I'm not following this. I'm really not following this at all. I don't know what the heck going on. I'm just eating high at this point, kind of zoning out. Where's the coincidence? Is his son? What's coincidental about having a son? I don't get it. This is so stupid. Who sent me this? Violet Jessup. What do the RMS Olympic, RMS Titanic, and the HMHS Britannic all have in common? A few things, actually. They were all built in the beginning of the 20th century. They were all great ships that seemed to be unsinkable. They all hit something that caused them to sink. They were considered to be sister ships. They all had one common passenger, Miss Violet Jessa. She was present when the RMS Olympic hit the HMS Hawk, when the HMHS Britannic hit a mine, and yes, when the RMS Titanic hit the infamous iceberg. Man, who thought being a stewardess and a nurse would be such hard work? Because of her extraordinary habit of surviving sinking ships, Jessup earned the nickname Miss Unsinkable. Depending on your point of view, Miss Violet Jessup was either the luckiest or unluckiest woman of all time. See, okay, I understand this story. This lady was on the Titanic, she was on the two other boats that sunk, and people were still letting her on these ships? I promise you, if I see this lady walking towards my boat, I'm slapping the crack out of her. I promise you, I'm doing it. She is time to get on my boat. Every boat she get on sink. And she survived every single time. She, she got some type of demonic spirit around her trying to kill her. Why should I go down when they trying to kill her? You know what I'm saying? Like, you be, like, okay, my grandfather, right, boom. He made this joke one time. He's like, bada boom, bada bing. I was like, um, if you go on a plane, right, You're not because they, they be scared of planes and stuff like that. I'm like, if you go on a plane, you're not going to die, you know what I'm saying? If it's not your time to die, you're not going to die. And he said, what if it's not your time to die? What if it's the pilot's time to die? So the pilot got to die in a plane crash and you just on the plane with him. You feel me? That's how I feel. Like You fly by yourself. You go on the boat by yourself, Miss Lady. I'm not going on no boat with you. As soon as I'm going to read the passenger list on every boat I go on from now on. If I see, what's her name again? I ain't even finna look. But if I know any lady that's coming on there that's unsinkable, <laughs> you finna sink today without me. <laughs> That's or we let the world's most dangerous serial ship sinker go free. Number five, taxi accident. 
Apparently, the 70s was an interesting time for taxi drivers. Not only did Robert De Niro's famous movie Taxi Driver come out in that decade, but there was also a pretty interesting set of taxi accidents in Bermuda. In 1975, a man was riding on his moped just like he would any other day, when he was unfortunately hit and killed by one of those usually helpful yellow cars. To make it worse, one unlucky passenger had to witness the accident take place. Probably not an ideal scene to watch right before going to work. Exactly one year later, another man was hit on a moped by a taxi. It was the first victim's brother, riding the same moped that his brother was riding a year earlier when he got hit. The taxi that hit him was being driven by the same taxi driver, and the witness passenger was the same one that was- Ain't no way! Ain't no way! That taxi driver is a murderer! He is- He's doing a- He's a hitman! He ain't no murderer, he a hitman, that passenger is an accomplice. Ain't no way. ...taxi the previous year. Perhaps the specific passenger should consider public transit from now on, and pray that the Moped brothers don't have any more siblings. Fact. Number four, Taming of the Ships. If you've studied Shakespeare, you've probably heard of this comedy, The Taming of the Shrew. A play full of funny and sometimes confusing disguises characters used to achieve their own goals. Tranio dressed up as Lucentio, Lucentio and Hortensio dressed up as scholars, and a nameless merchant dressed up as Vincentio. You get the idea. Well, I in don't. World War I, two ships might have taken the characters in the play a little too seriously. British forces transformed a cruise ship called the RMS Carmania into a battleship and then disguised it as a German passenger ship called the SMS Cap Trafalgar in order to avoid attracting attention from the German war vessels. Now, the Germans had the same idea as the Brits. They took the SMS Cap Trafalgar, turned it into a warship, and disguised it as the British cruise ship, the RMS Carmania. Despite all odds, the two actually met in battle when the German ship later ambushed the British ship off the coast of Brazil on September 14, 1914. The British ship survived the encounter while the German ship sank to the bottom of the ocean. So that's a win for the Carmania, or the Trafalgar, or... Whatever. Yeah, I don't know what the heck names he just said. That was not... That, that just bored Number three, me. King Umberto I. What the... Oh man, let's talk about this dude. Hold on, I'm finna get on this dude real quick. Hold on, real quick. Number three, King... Man, what is on your lip? What is on your lip, sir? Huh? How do you even do that? Big old mustache on your freaking lip. You thought hooligan? Umberto the first. On July 28, 1900, King Umberto the first of Italy went to a small restaurant in Monza to eat dinner. He was served by the owner, who Man, also look at the mustache. The two resembled each other with very similar builds and facial features, striking up conversation between them during which they found even more similarities. Both of their names were Umberto, and they were both born on March 14, 1844 what? in the town of Turin, Italy. The restaurant was opened on the same day that the king became the king, and both men married a woman named Margarita, and their marriages took place on the same day. Hey, okay, see, what? Hey, no, that's fake. Ain't no way all that stupidness happened. They had the same name. They married the same, the, the girl with the same name. They got married on the same day. They was born on the same day in the same town. And the king was becoming the king? The next day, the king found out that the restaurant owner had been murdered the night before in a strange shooting incident. As he was expressing his regrets and learning about the other man's death, an anarchist in the crowd assassinated him. Maybe the assassin was just as confused as the two men were to find a pair of identical twins who shared no known blood relation. What? Wait, why'd the king die? Two, James Dean Carr. Alright, let's start out with the fact that James Dean was killed in an accident. Wait, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. Why did the king die though? Why did they shoot him? Am I being stupid? Am I- Alright, be honest. Am I being slow right now? Because I understand none of the stuff except for the taxi one. And then the one with it, with it, with it. They got the same birthday and name and stuff. What's going on? And we're driving his Porsche in 1955. So, his car is already off to a not so good start. After the accident, the car was towed and brought into a garage, where the engine promptly fell out, landed on a mechanic's legs, breaking both of them instantly. Despite both of these events, a doctor still thought it would be a good idea to buy the engine and put it into the sports car. Apparently, he didn't get the memo that said engine was responsible for breaking both of a man's legs and ending another man's life. Another race car driver bought the drive shaft from the car, and he and the doctor were in a race together shortly thereafter, during which both of them were killed. The parts were returned and the Dean's Porsche was rebuilt in a garage. Once the car was in one piece again, the garage soon after caught on fire and burned down. What? I think that five mishaps would be enough to make people keep their distance from the car. But 
Sadly, no. The car was put on display in Sacramento, where it fell down off its stand, breaking a teen's hip. The car was then transported to Oregon, where it fell over the trailer it was in, and smashed into the front of a shop. Because all that still wasn't enough to convince people to leave the car alone, in 1959 the car spontaneously broke into 11 pieces, and people took the hint and left the parts to rot. Wait, 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 wait. That car is an assassin. That car is a serial killer. You feel me? Oh, what demonic spirit is over that car? That's what I want to know. What is... Okay. Number one, James Twins. Twins have been a topic of common interest for what seems like forever. In the 20th century, people were so interested in twins that psychologists performed experiments and observations on sets of twins that would be considered highly unethical and inhumane by today's standards. I guess that's probably why they stopped. Although if they heard about Ohio's James twins, maybe they wouldn't have. After a pair of identical twin boys were born, they were separated and given to two different adoptive families. Despite neither family being in contact with each other, both of the boys were named James. The two boys grew up separately, not knowing anything about the other's existence. Now hold on to your hats, because this is where things really start to get weird. Both men became police officers when they grew up. They both married a woman named Linda and had sons, and one twin named his son James Allen with one L, and the other named his son James Allen with two L's. Both twins had a dog named Toy. After they both got divorced from their respective Lindas, they both remarried a woman named Betty. What? There's no way. That's not. There ain't no way. There ain't. This. There's no way. I know. If okay, listen. If you a twin right now, know any twins? Drop in the comments down below. Do twins have twin telepathy? Like they be talking to each other through their head. They be like, "How you doing today, James?" I'm doing good today, James. Like that type of thing. Cause ain't no freaking way. Cause I feel like, okay, I know some twins, right? And they dress the same all the time without even trying to. They got that same type of, <sighs> okay. That's it, that's the end of the video. Honestly, I ain't for the whole, I don't know what the heck happened in that whole video. I'm not even gonna lie to you and pretend like I was like, oh, this is a fire video. I don't know what the heck happened this entire freaking video. I don't know what they were talking about, the warships, the Titanic sinking. I don't know what they was talking about with none of that. Now I'm saying. But if you enjoyed the video, if you know what the heck they're talking about, you obviously smarter than me. Maybe I'm just being slow. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm being slow, because I personally don't I don't know what the heck happened in this whole video. Like I heard some coincidences that was like, whoa, what the heck? And then I heard some other videos that I just wanted to fall asleep to. And I it, I don't it, anyways, like the video, man. If you if send me something to react to that's gonna be fine and not put me to sleep over there at Jubra underscore. If I react to your video, I will shout you out. I shout you out. I, I tell people to go follow you, subscribe, you su subscribe to your OnlyFans, whatever you want. I tell people to do that if you want to. Just send me a fire video to react to, you know what I'm saying? But before you dip out, draw that comment. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You could, if you could translate that, damn me on Instagram right now and be like, yo, I know what you said in that video. And I'm going to text you back because only a few can speak my language know what i'm saying but uh that's the end of the video hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day and i'm gonna see y'all ouch hey yo c3 so fly hop out the butterfly wings to the sky no i'm never borderline they choose i because i'm way above you the waves make the haters love you when the ladies come through